The ATX to PC Junior power supply adapter board is complete. It is now available for purchase on my website with two versions. First, we have the kit version that you can get for $15 plus shipping that you have to assemble all of the electronics yourself, but it's pretty simple. Really, you only have to solder on the main power connector, the Molex power connector for the floppy drive and the fan headers along with two wires that go to the switch. Or for $20, you can get everything already assembled, and the only thing you have to do is screw the switch into the 3D printed backplane of your choice. Of which, both kits come with two different versions. One is compatible with a standard ATX power supply, and the other is designed to be used with a Pico PSU. The kit itself is quite easy to put together. The only things you need to solder on are the headers, the Molex 4-pin power cable, and the Molex Minifit Junior 20 position right angle connector. A small note, the holes for the Minifit Junior right angle connector didn't come out as well as I'd hoped, and they're a little bit small for the pins. So you're going to have to press firmly, and it's not going to go all the way through. But it still sticks through plenty enough to get a good connection soldered onto the other side. The only thing you really need to pay attention to is the orientation of the 4-pin connector here. Now, I have it marked on the board what colors need to go where, and I should have marked the rounded side versus the square angled side, but if you just take a connector from any ATX power supply and plug it in, you'll see that the yellow side matches up with Y, and the red side matches up with R when you have it soldered in correctly. After you've soldered the circuit board together, all you need to do is solder to the switch, which is very easy. Just put two wires on one side, which color goes where doesn't actually matter, the switch itself just sends a signal to the power supply by pulling the pin for the power on low to ground. Which order you put them on doesn't make a difference for that. And on the other side you'll solder to the female header. And I've included a piece of shrink tubing to make it look a bit nicer if you want. Next, you will want to remove and disconnect the two cables from the original power board inside the computer. And install your new adapter board. Now, the Molex connector fits on very easily, and the fan connector can go on either direction. This is true of the original board as well, so you don't really have to pay attention to how you put it in there. Now for the next step, the two 3D printed pieces are important. So I'm going to show you how to use the external ATX power supply board first. Installing the rear panel for the external ATX power supply isn't the easiest thing, so let me walk you through this. You'll want to thread the cable for the power switch through the hole and make sure you have it aligned with the two cables on the bottom. Next, you need to make sure that the switch is flipped down so there's a gap at the top. Go ahead and slide the switch into the power hole and hold it up as high in the switch hole as you possibly can. You're going to need to feed the rear panel in between the switch and the case and slowly push it down and rotate it until you can get it around the switch. Once that's in place, you can go around to the outside of the case pull the switch up with one hand and thread a screw into the bottom hole with the other. Once you've done that, your power supply switch is installed. Your rear panel will probably feel loose, and that's alright. The top of it is retained against a ledge in the lid, so it won't be loose once you put the case back together. And now the final two steps for the external version. We just need to unplug the board so we can more easily get to the header for the power switch and plug that in. Then you'll want to run your ATX power cable through the slot and connect it to the adapter board. And that's it. We can put the top of the case back on now and your PC Junior is ready to go. Before we power it up for the first time though, let me go ahead and cover the steps for the Pico PSU panel. So the first thing you're going to want to do is thread the power connector for the Pico PSU into the 5mm barrel jack hole on the rear. You may need to get in there with some pliers to grab the metal part, but it should go in fairly easily and when you're all done, it's going to be in there pretty tight. It might be a little loose, you can see if you can get the nut on there, I did leave a bit of a lip, so that should be doable. Then you'll want to feed the wires for the power switch through, have the two wires on the bottom because that makes it line up with the original power documentation on the back of the unit. Unlike the external power supply, you need to put the screw for the panel mount switch on the top for the panel for the Pico PSU. Once you have everything put together, you can just slide the Pico PSU panel down until the wall is in the little fork in the back. 
Then you can pull the board out, plug the power switch into the header, and connect the Pico PSU itself into the Minifit Junior connector. Drop the whole thing in, tuck down the cables, and slide the top panel in place. And once you have the Pico PSU panel installed, it pretty closely mimics the original setup. You can just plug in your 12 volt power supply and then you have your standard power switch in the correct position. So that covers setting up both versions of my adapter. Now let's try booting up a PC Junior with an ATX power supply. And that's how you can free your PC Junior of the stupid external AC power supply. I can't imagine I'm the only person who's gotten one of these without getting the external power supply, so I bet there's some other people who would find this useful out there. Now I want to cover a few more technical details for those who might consider getting one of these. Alright, now the first thing I want to cover is the negative 12 volt rail on the Pico PSU. So some people had expressed concern that the Pico PSU wouldn't actually be able to drive the negative 12 volt components on the PC Junior's motherboard. Well, I looked into the schematic and I could only find three devices that actually use the negative 12 volt rail. One of them was an SN75188, which only uses 25 milliamps at load, and the others were just some op amps that are used for the audio circuits. Now, those op amps are creating high impedance outputs, so they really shouldn't be using that much current anyway. The Pico PSU's negative 12 volt rail can output 50 milliamps continuously, so the 25 milliamps and the high impedance outputs should be fine. So I don't see a reason to put an extra negative 12 volt regulator on the board like people were suggesting. Now another confusing thing about this is I worked with someone else to test some things about the power boards and the negative rail, and it looks like the 33 watt power board outputs only negative 6 volts. But it does seem like the system board was designed for that because everywhere it references the negative voltage rail, it's only showing negative 6 volts. So that should be fine. But then you might wonder, well, your board is outputting negative 12 volts, won't that be a problem? And the answer is also no. It looks like the 45 watt power board did output negative 12 volts. So both are acceptable. Of the three chips that I found that were connected to it, two of them were op amps so the minimum negative rail doesn't matter, and the SN75188 has a wide voltage input range, so it's also fine with the different voltages. The next thing is a discouragement. Don't rely on this board to power everything connected to the expansion port. I don't know what the losses are going to be across the system board, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't designed to handle enough power running through it for all the stuff on the expansion bus. The power sidecar exists for a reason. One final note is about which Pico PSUs you can use. The answer is all of them. I'm using the Bargain Basement 80 watt Pico PSU for this, and that's just gonna be fine. Well, I think that lets you know everything I wanted to cover about my ATX to PC Junior power supply adapter boards. Again, if you want to get one of these, I've put a link to my website in the description where you can purchase one over PayPal. If I run out of them before I get more parts in for the next order, which I'm going to be doing soon, then feel free to email me at my email address, which I'll also put in the description, and I'll get back to you once I've gotten the parts in. Emailing me when I'm out of stock lets me also know how many of these I should be ordering parts for. For now, I'm just going to keep ordering enough parts to build 10 kits every time I get down to 5 left. But if I get a ton of emails now that this video is live, then I'll go ahead and make a bigger order so everyone can get them all at once while this is getting a lot of attention. And I'll also let everyone know that these design files are available as open source, and I put a link to the GitHub repository for everything in case you want to modify this, or just get your own boards made and forget me altogether. I don't mind, it's how it works when you go open source. I'd rather these files be available for the community to make them if I ever am no longer able to make these boards myself. So it's better for something like this not to just die in obscurity. Well, that's everything I wanted to cover. I hope this is able to help some people, and I'll see you next time.